Hello and welcome. I'm Sarah Freeman, Managing Editor of Business and Finance. Today I'll be speaking with Dr. Robbie Smith, Deputy Head of the Faculty of Journalism and Media Communications in Griffith College. We'll be exploring the themes of trust and safety, the broad issues of media and communication market regulation in Ireland and internationally. Dr. Smith, you're very welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Sarah. Let's get started. Dr. Smith, why did you choose to develop this course in the first place? Um, two reasons. One was that we could see graduates were beginning to um, enter the trust and safety area. And uh, when we contacted and we keep up with our alumni, um, some of them are quite secretive about the work that it was they were doing. We're always you know, concerned here or we want to keep a wetter eye on whether our courses are fit for purpose. And this, this was a new area for us. And at the same time, we met um, a company called Kinzen and Mark Little, and he suggested us the idea of that maybe we could develop a, a course for for people in the in the area and that's where it, where it began and we began to do research and interview people who worked in trust and safety from um, people on the front line to way way up the food chain in in platforms it took quite a while because the industry is is quite secretive um, and keeps quiet about about the scale of what it is they're doing Absolutely. And of course, it's such a developing topical issue right now. Mm. How did the cross faculty themes emerge? Um, well, that came out of the research because one of the questions that we asked people who were working in trust and safety was what skills they had and what skills they wanted to, to develop. And so people talked about things like you know, project management and um, some basic computing skills and um, communication skills. And then all the way along, there was this idea about the, the, the mental health and the stresses on people. And that's where it came from. So, we, you know, we don't teach project management in the media faculty, but um, we went to the graduate business school and said, oh, yeah, we we can do that. And the same with the computing faculty. And, and one of our partners is a company called ICAS and um, they run psychology degrees and um, psychotherapy masters. And they were a natural fit for developing the, the self-care module. So that's that's where it came from. We also partnered with a company called Mimetica and a man called Benjamin Decker in the United States. And they're going to run a module for us on digital investigation. So it was the research really is the, the simple answer. Fantastic. So the course really is very specifically curated to meet the emerging demands of the industry. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us more about how the course seeks to tackle the issues facing the industry? You've touched on it there, but maybe expand a little bit. Well, at one level, the, the, the course is about skills for people who work in trust and safety. Um, but there's an academic side to it, which is also about how do we get here? And um, so there's a long history from if you're studying communications or, or media, there's, there's a huge academic research into the development of media. And there really hasn't been a medium that people haven't been suspicious of from, from print to people reading novels to um, radio and television and newspapers. Um, if you think about when I was growing up, we were always told about the dangers of television and <laughs> we're ne they're, they're never mentioned now <laughs> compared to the other dangers. So there's, there's a context that new media happens in. And I think that's really important to, um, to when we think about social media and the internet in general, that it's, it's just the latest edition of a new long line of things that, that humans have encountered and we need strategies for how we deal with it. Very interesting. So the perceived dangers have shifted. And you've touched on this a little bit. Um, you worked closely with Mark Little and Oinia Kerr from Kinzen in developing yep. the course. Can you tell us a little bit more about their input? Um, well, we met weekly with people from Kinzen um, as, as, as we went through the research because we, as, as we discussed our findings or we wanted to, to target more people. They were great at getting us entry into some platforms um, and, and just discussing, you know, who should we interview and people like that. And also, as we came back with, oh, this, this is an issue, they were able to, you know, brainstorm. We did it every Friday for maybe six months. We just went through our research, you know, what, who could we get here? How, how do we answer this question? And so it was quite hands on from them as, as to how we did it. So quite extensive input. And just to change tack slightly, as a media expert yourself, is enough being done to tackle disinformation in society? No, but I think we're, we've reached a critical point where that everybody 
accepts we can't go on. Um, the platform's accepted, the regulators accepted, and I think there's a willingness in the public that you know something has gone badly wrong with social media. You know whether it's Spotify or Reddit or something like Facebook or TikTok, that there's there's a huge amount of work work to be done. But what is good is that everyone for the first time is kind of facing the same direction. And within the European Union, I think there's going to be huge changes in terms of Digital Services Act and online safety. And even in Ireland, we have an online safety bill. So all, all of those things are important in, in moving us to, a, to a, a better environment in terms of how we regulate media. And I suppose just to elaborate on that, what about the wider regulatory environment in Ireland and internationally? What, what's going to happen there? Well, it's, it's clear that the world is splitting up into maybe four or five intranets. There's the American one and their regulations. And then there's the European Union one, which is really cited in the, the EU Digital Service Act and the GDPR. Um, and then there's what happens in Russia and what happens in China and the rest of the world. Um, so we're in a very luxurious position in Europe that, that we probably have more internet protections and online protections, and even that it don't seem enough compared to any other region in the world, but they need to be better. And that's that's what's interesting is that Europe, I think, has led the way with GDPR, and I think it will lead the way with um, digital services. So one example is the state of California has introduced a privacy law that's very, very similar to the GDPR. So that's the impact that good regulation can have. That's really fascinating. I'd never thought it thought about it like that, as in four separate internets. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. And as I was looking more broadly, what other developments do you see taking place within the media landscape over the next few years? Well, you can see one one thing that's never really gone away is mergers and acquisitions, and um, there is just. We're, we're about to enter, I think, a huge stage of mergers and acquisitions. Um, so you can see it with Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard. Um, even just today, the regulator in Britain allowed the Sunday Times to merge with the um, with the Times Daily. Um, so you're going to see a lot more of these things, some in old media like that, and but also a lot of new media. And you can see it here with things like Bauer Media and companies like that that have a footprint here and Liberty Global through Virgin. There's going to be a lot more consolidation and that in itself creates a re regulation issue. So we can expect to see a lot more M&A in the future. Yeah, and I think you're, you're going to see it on, on an Irish scale, a European scale and, and an international scale, just huge ongoing mergers. Really interesting. Dr. Smith, thank you for such an illuminating conversation. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, Sarah.